welcome to our virtual Club 56 classroom. So, these last few weeks have been pretty crazy. It feels weird to not be with you guys in person. I miss being able to have group discussions. And now, I have to eat all the snacks all by myself. about how we all have a choice to make. You have to choose to accept Jesus as your Savior and make your faith your own. No one, not your church, not your parents, not your Sunday school leaders, can make this decision for you. And going to church isn't what makes us Christians. Especially during these times, you and all of us have a choice that we have to make. You may have a lot more time on your hands than usual. You can choose whether you use that time to grow closer to God and spend time with Him, or if you let other things like anxiety, fun hobbies, or even boredom distract you from your faith. So, I'm going to switch up the topic a bit. Today marks the beginning of Holy Week, and there's so many great things about Holy Week that we could talk about. But today I want to talk about a story that we maybe don't focus on quite as much. So, I'm going to read to you from Mark 14, and we're starting in verse 27 and reading to verse 31. You will all fall away, Jesus told them, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I have risen, I will go ahead of you into Galilee. Peter declared, even if all fall away, I will not. I tell you the truth, Jesus answered. Today, yes, tonight, before the rooster crows twice, you yourself will disown me three times. But Peter insisted emphatically, even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. And the others said the same. So now we are going to read verses 66 to 72. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she looked closely at him. You also were with that Nazarene, Jesus, she said, but he denied it. I don't know or understand what you're talking about, he said, and went out into the entryway. When the servant girl saw him there, she said again to those standing around, This fellow is one of them. Again he denied it. After a little while, those standing near said to Peter, Surely you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. He began to call down curses on himself, and he swore to them, I do not know this man you're talking about. Immediately a rooster crowed the second time. Then Peter remembered the word Jesus had spoken to him. Before the rooster crows twice, he will disown me three times. And he broke down and wept. So, what's happening here is the disciples are sitting down with Jesus and eating a meal that will later be known as the Last Supper. And Peter is making claims and saying that he will never fall away from Jesus. But Jesus tells Peter that before morning, he will disown him three times. Peter can't believe this. He starts making claims and saying that he would die for Jesus. And yet, just a few verses later, we do see that Peter does in fact say three times that he doesn't know Jesus. This is Peter, the same Peter who saw the Spirit of God on the mountain, the same Peter who saw numerous miracles. He's claiming to not know Jesus. When I read this, it just makes me think, what are you thinking, Peter? Are you really that weak? But then I think, how often do we act like Peter? It's easy to be Christians when we're around Christian friends, and it's easy to make bold claims when those around us will agree with us. But when being a Christian isn't the cool thing to do, or when our friends make fun of our faith, are we still just as proud of Jesus? When things are looking bleak, do we hold on to our faith? Or do we act more like Peter? Now, what I love most about this story is that this isn't where Peter's story ends. He messed up big time, but Jesus didn't give up on him. After he's raised from the dead, Jesus not only reconciles with Peter, but he puts him in charge of caring for his church. If we turn to Acts, 
We see Peter so on fire with the Holy Spirit that his shadow is healing people as he walks by them. Jesus didn't dwell on Peter's mistakes. We're all going to make mistakes. Me, you, your parents. But that doesn't mean that your story is over. Your mistakes don't have to mess up God's plan for your life. There's redemption and forgiveness in Jesus. So I want to leave you guys with a challenge, and my challenge for you this week is to pray every day. Choose a time of day, first thing in the morning, and right after supper, or before bed are all good times, and take a couple of minutes to spend just with God. Grow closer to Him and ask Him how you can be a part of His story today. So I'm going to pray for you guys. Father, thank you for this morning, and thank you that your church is not confined to a building. I pray for each and every child, those watching this and those that are not. I pray that they would grow closer to you and that you would draw them to you so that they can speak boldly about their faith to their friends. In Jesus' name, amen. I miss you guys and I love you all. Bye.